Seeking the New Poetry, Poems of K.D. Setna, Amal Kiran, Part 1. Volumes have been written by those who knew and loved Amal Kiran, the name given to him by Sri Aurobindo, a clear ray. My friendship with Amal dates back to the early 1970s, when, as editor of the monthly Mother India magazine, he began publishing my poems and encouraged me constantly to continue. Our friendship continued until his departure at age 106. In this series, I aspire to introduce his poems, a magnificent oeuvre of spiritual poetry, many with Sri Aurobindo's comments. Tree of Time I am a tree of time, a swaying shadow, with one sole branch lit by eternity. All of me dark, save this song fruitful hand. There, the large splendor tunes my blood and makes fragments of deathless ecstasy outflower. And I but live in these few fingers that trace on life's uncolored air a burning cry from God abysses to God pinnacles. Someday the buried vast which holds me rooted in dreamful kinship to the height of heaven, shall wake. Then through each quivering nerve shall course no feeble brightness self-consumed in joy, like the brief passions of earth, but nectar flame, a force drunk with its own infinitude. Grace, take all my shining hours from me, but hang upon my quiet soul's pale brow your dream kiss like a gem. Let life fall stricken to its knee if unto lone-faced poverty you give your blessings diadem. Make of these proud eyes beggar bowls, but only drop your smile in them. Young-hearted river, when to your marge the slow night comes, with its innumerable gleams to strew upon your gliding dreams kisses like pale chrysanthemums. Young-hearted river, mutable, gay, forget not in that cool embrace of naked shadow or the play of dim desire which throngs your gaze the ancient urge, the rapturous throw, beneath your surface stellar stain of floods from heights of endless snow and pure immeasurable rain that voiceless silences might break to echo far profundities and the long slumbering mountains wake to seek for the unsleeping seas. Forget not, while brief gladdenings flit like fireflies through your lowland years, the longing of ecstatic tears from infinite to infinite. Prelude O fire divine, 
make this great marvel pass. That some pure image of your shadowless will may float within my song's enchanted glass. Sweep over my breath of dream your mystic mood. O dragon bird, whose golden harmonies fill with rays of rapture all infinitude. Or else, by unexplorable magic, rouse the distance of a superhuman drowse, a paradisal vast of love unknown, that even through a nakedness of night my heart may feel the puissance of your light, the blinding luster of a measureless sun. Sri Aurobindo's comment on this poem. Very fine. Language and rhythm remarkably harmonious. Terrace Tatusk Rotundus, smooth, complete, and rounded. Amal. The expression is very felicitous and embodying exactly the thing seen. Source is poetic intelligence drawn back into inner mind and lifting towards the overhead planes from which it receives its vision and substance, and a certain breath of subtlety and largeness. Sri Aurobindo. All heaven's secrecy lit to one face, crowning with calm the body's blinded cry, a soul bright splendor like the noon. But only shadowless love can breathe this pure sun blossom, fragrant with eternity. Eagles of rapture lifting flickerless, a golden trance wide-winged on golden air. Sri Aurobindo's comment. It comes from the higher mind, except for the third and seventh lines, which have illumination and are very fine. Savitri. A rose of dawn, her smile lights every gaze. Her love is like a nakedness of noon. No flame but breathes in her the spirit's calm and pours the omnipresence of a sun. Her tongues of fire break from a voiceless deep, dreaming the taste of some ineffable height. A cry to clasp the one God hush in all, a universal hunger's white embrace that from the unknown leaps burning to the unknown. Sri Aurobindo's comment. Exceedingly fine, both the language and rhythm are very powerful and highly inspired. When the inspiration is there, you reach more and more a peculiar fusion of the three influences, higher mind, illumined, mental and intuitive, with a touch of the overmind intuition coming in. This touch is strongest here in the second and the two closing lines. But it is present in all except two. The third, 
which is yet a very fine line indeed, and the seventh, where it is not present in the typed version. And then in parentheses, a cry to clasp in all the one God hush, but seems, end parentheses, but seems to touch perhaps in the written one, again parentheses, a cry to clasp the one God hush in all. In the typed version, the higher mental is strongest, but in the written one, which is less emphatic but more harmonious, the rhythm gets in a higher influence. The, in the other lines, the illumined mental influence lifting up the higher mental is strongest, but is itself lifted up into the intuitive in all but the third, just high enough to get the touch of the overmental intuition. <laughs>